Hattie McDaniel's brilliant performance as Mammy made her the most famous and honored African-American actress of her day. But it also put her in the very center of the controversy over racial stereotypes in the movies. Hattie's big break in motion pictures came in 1934 when she was cast in an important role in Judge Priest. The film, directed by John Ford, was a major success and Hattie was highly praised for her performance. Hattie's success in Judge Priest led to more roles and more money, but she soon found herself being criticized for playing roles that were considered demeaning to the growing civil rights movement. She grew tired of the attacks and responded angrily, when you ask me not to play the parts, what have you got to offer in return? The attacks, however, would only grow louder in the following years. In 1935, George Stevens cast her as the highly independent maid in Alice Adams opposite Catherine Hepburn. Dennis, sir. <laughs> Other such roles followed, and her back-talking, sometimes bossy servant became something of a hatty trademark. Although this type of role was a step in the right direction, it surprisingly brought criticism from some white audiences who found Hattie too sassy for their tastes. The overwhelming success of Gone with the Wind elevated Hattie to a level never before achieved by an African-American performer. David O. Selznick, however, who now had Hattie under exclusive contract, seemed to have trouble knowing just what to do with her. Over the next few years, Selznick loaned Hattie services out to other studios, where she appeared in a number of films, including In This Our Life, with Olivia de Havilland. Now, you just like your grandma, Mrs. Timberlake. Only I'm not so pretty. No. But none equaled her great success in Gone with the Wind. I think it's humiliating the way you're treating Mr. Kennedy. You'd be a sight more humiliated if Mr. Kennedy's lice gets on you. In 1947, Hattie made radio history by starring in her own series for CBS, The Beulah Show. By the end of 1948, the show was one of the most popular on radio, with an audience of 15 million listeners. By 1951, The Beulah Show was so popular that there were both television and radio versions running at the same time. Hattie had only completed six of the television episodes when she was suddenly stricken by illness, which later was found to be cancer. She insisted her illness be kept secret from the public and was taken to the motion picture country house in Woodland Hills, where she remained until October the 26th, 1952, when she died at age 57.